Good morning. So glad you're here. You're able to join us. And I uh, just want to start by saying welcome. What a great time of worship and communion. And, and if you are new, there's all kinds of ways that we would love to connect and, and answer questions. If you're maybe not new, but you have some questions about what's going on here at our church. The first one is just go outside. You'll see a teal tent. This is new here. And you can just ask those folks anything you want. And they do a great job of just helping people out. Or maybe it's just easier for you. You want to scan the QR code or text the word new uh, that you see on the screen. We would love to just uh, say hello, get to know you a little bit in this way. And one of our team members will be uh, there in touch with you soon and just help you out. And and the the most uh, effective way to stay up to date with what's happening in our church, which there always seems to be a lot going on here, is through our app. And... You use apps for all kinds of things. The thing about our app that is unique is not only will there be some notes for my message and all our messages there, uh, but also it changes often. I was just on there the other day, and I was looking at some things. I was like, I did not know we were doing that. That's awesome. And uh, maybe you don't know all the things that are there, and you need to go and check it out sometimes, even if you've had it for a while. And then right after this service is a monthly event we do called Next And next is very casual, it's very informative, and it's for anybody who just wants to know what can our church do to help them in their life, their family, to grow holistically. Like, what is is this church about? What are the things that come next, as the name indicates? And as you see in the picture, we're not tricking you. There's pizza there. Uh, At least they're supposed to be, you know. And if Namarco's does their part, we'll eat it, right? So come, there's pizza, there's salads for your whole family. Uh, Bring the kids. You don't even have to, some of you have planned on it, you got an RSVP, some of you can just show up. It's across the parking lot as soon as we're done here with this service. And uh, I just want to say thank you. So many of you are a part of what happens at our church. A couple weeks ago we had baptism celebration and maybe you were here, maybe you uh, saw, participated in some way, but I love, I got three or four different pictures. This is uh, two ladies who Uh, went to high school together just a couple years ago here at Coconino High School and recently reconnected at a church and one asked the other to baptize them. It was such a great celebration. Uh, Some college students, some friends who've been in a small group, a life group together for a long time, and uh, even family members baptizing this. A guy baptized his nephew and it was just an exciting Sunday. Ten different people were baptized uh, that celebration weekend and and we just want to say thanks for all the ways that that happens. I mean, maybe you don't realize this. We've had 73 people this year, 2022, kids, students uh, at the corner, people here, adults. You, you saw even in that, those pictures, young, uh, all different ages. We have 73 people have been baptized at our church this year. That's, that's pretty phenomenal. <laughs> and, and the way that things happen here are very, uh, they're very holistic, you really can't separate those who serve from those who share, build a relationship for those who give, or, or those who just participate in things. What God does, like all these work together, and, and we just want to say thanks for whatever, whatever way you're involved in that. You, you see on the screen, and you got this handout as you came to grab this real quick. Uh, we're just talking about some financial things for a couple weeks, and we just want you to have some information. And so that information's here, and on one side, there's a little bit of information about uh, how we use the resources we have as a church. And then the top part of this back page are just some tools to help all of us in our own families, our own lives, just have some resources that maybe are timely. So you can check those out. Uh, the other side talks about giving and what God's blessed us with in, in sharing that because he does amazing things with it. And, and so we are going to talk for the next couple of weeks, three weeks, uh, about our financial foundations. Like, what are the things that when we talk about our money, we talk about our resources, what do we decide upon? What's that built on? So let's start with this. Let me start with a a question. You don't don't say this out. Just think about it. What is it you own? What what, what is it you own? Just think about things you own. I was thinking about this ahead of time because I knew I would ask myself this question this morning. And I realized I own two-thirds of a house me and the bank used to own it like as equal partners, but now I've moved ahead of them in, in the position on my, my... Okay, some of you don't get that joke. That's okay. Uh, I own some re- 
retirement funds, a 401. Uh, a 2010 uh, Ford F-150, yep. It's pretty awesome, I love it. I got some new scratches on it recently, pretty proud of those. Uh, I was looking around our house, like my wife and I, we own a kitchen table. Anybody else own a kitchen table? Not making payments on my table. It's mine, my table. Couches. Uh, last service, there were some friends, they were here, uh, and, I, and it made me remember they were in our house a while back, and they go, where did you get that coffee table? And I was like, the thrift store? They're like, yeah, we donated it to the thrift store. <laughs> like, their dog's claw marks were on the side. Like, I was like, cool, you know? So, but now it's my table. It's not their table anymore. It's my coffee table. I, I own these shoes, all my clothes, like, right? Like, I own this coffee mug. I paid for this. It used to have a logo of my favorite sports team on it. It was worth a lot more back then, but what comes to mind? What do you own? Have you ever seen, we were talking about this question t- this week, our, our staff team and, and some of the, the team that have younger kids, they, they were like, this reminds me of when my kids fight over, like they each have the same thing, they're just different colors. They're like, I want the blue cup of orange juice, this red cup is no good. It's the same orange juice, it's just the cup is like, have you ever watched that happen? Like your kids, or, or you think back, have you ever seen a family, I've unfortunately seen this, like fight over grandma's inheritance? And, and you hear people talk about like, I'm not talking to my sister, she took grandma's jewelry. That was mine. And you would have thought like the Walton estate, you know, the people who started Walmart was at stake. And you hear like grandma's jewelry wasn't even real. <laughs> and you're not talking to your, and if this is your, I'm not telling your story, like that's just coincidence, Sorry. You know, a cabin, some money. We we need to talk about this because still, even today, if you go and look at some research, the number two cause of divorce in our country is the people getting divorced say it's financial stress and miss, uh, they're just, they can't get on the same page financially. Infidelity is number one. Like that shouldn't surprise us, right? That causes divorce. And financial problems, situation, misunderstanding, stress, is number two. And so I know you've seen a marriage, a a series of relationships end because of money. And maybe that's your story, and I'm really sorry. I hope that's not your story again. And, And I think some of it is just before we're married, like right before we enter into that kind of relationship where we have to figure that out and negotiate it, we don't have to decide. We it's just mine. This is just my mug. Nobody would have taken my mug before I got married and had children with my favorite team's logo painted on it in the dishwasher and baked off the paint. <laughs> that, that never happened before. So my mug is now ugly and boring and not near what I paid for it. Relationships are hard. And a mug's a silly example, I know, right? But if financial situations and and stress are the number two cause of marriage relationships ending, it forces us, I think, we just have to deal with, like, what is mine? What is yours? When you get married, so you got to go, well, what's ours? Who owns these things? And I wonder if the level in which we fight on those things with our siblings, on inheritance, with our spouses, whoever it might be. I wonder if conversations about 401ks and grandma's inheritance and, and are we going to spend or are we going to save? Are we going to go on the expensive vacation or are we going to do the cheap one? Right, like all these things happen. I, I wonder if God just looks at it and goes, they're just, it's a red cup or a blue cup. Why are you fighting over these insignificant things. What comes to mind when I ask the question, what do you own? Because I believe there's a better, there's a better foundation for, for the way that we see, the way we handle our finances than, than we usually consider. And if for no other reasons than to just help our relationships with each other. 
I, I, I just see over and over again, I've seen it in our life, I've seen it in other people's lives, when we can get this area squared away, on the same page, on the, on the same correct foundation, so many other stresses go away, not everything. And, and if you aren't married and you're, you're looking for that to change in your future, you want uh, to be married at some point, I would just say, and, and I say this unapologetically, you need to find someone that this is not negotiable. That when you're deciding, is this the person I want to spend my rest of, like, just take in the information. If divorce is the number, or if finances are the number two cause of divorce, if you're on the same financial foundation, single people, your success in marriage just got way higher probabilities. If you have the same financial foundation, I say this is non-negotiable. And we're just going to, and I say it because it's not my opinion, right? I'm not that, I'm not that smart. I'm not, this isn't, this isn't just what Chris thinks about your financial foundations. It's, we're just going to go with the Bible, okay? Like, let's just, I say the beginnings of a good place to start. If you, if you have a Bible you want to, or you want to look at it, here, here it is on the screen. I mean, literally the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. So there's this rule, whether you acknowledge it or not, there's this like rule of life that if you create something, you own it. You guys buy that logic? Some of you are thinking ahead. You're like, I'm not agreeing to anything this guy says today. <laughs> Fair enough. I've been there. Still true. If you make something, it's yours. So God makes everything. He creates all of it. So it's pretty, pretty next step thinking, right? God is the owner. And that's, a, that's the financial foundation we're going to start with. It's how he starts the story of his interaction with people. It's his telling of us what he... And, and then later, the ancient Hebrew poets in, in the letter or the psalm say, the earth is the Lord's, everything in it. The world, excuse me, all who live in it. He found it on the seas. He established it on the waters. Later, in Psalm 50, this is great, okay? So if you're worried about this whole thing, just take a deep breath. I bring no charge against you concerning your sacrifices. This is, what God, this is God's voice to the people in Psalm 50. Or concerning your burnt offerings, which are before me. I, I, we're not here to talk about how much money you give our church, okay? Because just... He says, I have, I have no need of a bull from your stall or goats from your pens. Because at that point in time, this was how offering, giving to God's work was. It was bringing livestock or, or crops or the things you owned. Look at this. Here's why. It's God saying, for every animal in the forest is mine. And some of you with elk tags want him to share with you, right? <laughs> yes? No? All the, you, maybe they're already out there. And, and you could pray and say, God, I just want one. Just one elk, please. They're all yours. And the cattle on a thousand hills, I know every bird in the mountains, the insects in the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you. God doesn't need your money. Because he's actually, it's, the world is his. He, he, it's already his. And all that is in it. So if you think this is going to be about, like, our church trying to get more of your money, that's just not true. That's not what God's heart is. He's already got it all. He's the owner. And, and what makes this confusing for me, maybe for some others, is, is I look at the things I have and I think they come from my work. Like, like, like I said, if you make something, you own it, right? So I make a living, like many of you. Or you did make a living, or, or someone in your family makes a living, and it affords you to just live, to participate in life. So I, I work, and I get paid, and, and money every, like twice a month goes into an account, and I get to decide what to do with it. It's mine. So one day I was walking through a store, and I saw this mug <laughs> that had the logo of my favorite team on it, and they charge twice as much when they do that. I did not even care. Paid way too much. 
and I loved it because it was mine. And it had my, it, I went to work, received fair, generous compensation, and I just said, I, I want that. It's mine, right? You look at your, your house, your assets, your retirement, your 401k, your, whatever, you go, that's, I earned that. So this is where when I say God's the owner, we get, we get a little, can, we got to work this out. So let's just keep going. We're looking at what the Bible says. Genesis 1, the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 2. Is we're, we're, we're seeing the story of God beginning life in the universe and, and that creation. And how he makes this place called earth and he, he makes it with water and fish and trees and, and animals and people. And then in chapter 2, verse 15, the Lord God took the man put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. So Adam and Eve are ancestors, the first people God connects with, they're gardeners. That, they, they, they have a job and they do work. And this is really important. And one thing I, I, I want to point out in, is that in chapter three of Genesis in the story of us with God is the fall of man. It's when sin comes into the world. So this this point where God says, hey, here's something I need you to do. I have work for you. is not a, a result of sin. It's not punishment for Adam's falling of, in, in Eve's mistake. Now, work got harder. You can read that in chapter 3, but it, it didn't begin after the fall. And, and, and then I see kind of where, where we go with this. is like, yeah, but God gave us work to do, and, and I do the work. I generate this income so it's mine, and I get to decide. And then I think it's a little bit like, I remember my son had gone away to college for a few months, and we'd call, and he wouldn't answer, we'd text, he wouldn't reply, and I, I finally sent a message, said, hey, uh, I pay for that phone. You're gonna call your mom back. Oh, guess who called real soon? <laughs> so, so sometimes you gotta remind people of things, and here's God's reminder for us, Deuteronomy chapter eight. This whole chapter is, is his people, his children are going into this land. He's promised for them. And he's like, when you're there, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. It's my mug. You might say that someday, God said. It's like he knew what we would do. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. I feel like sometimes this verse comes to me like a, like a, like just a reminder from a, from a loving parent. Hey, it's not you. See, here's what he's saying. God has given us, all of us, abilities, opportunities, and a calling for work calling to work. And and I don't know where you're at right now. Every season's different. All of us are in different, because we have different abilities, different opportunities, different callings. And and when I say work, I don't mean a place where you get a paycheck, because your calling might be to raise a family, right? And you know no one's paying you for that. There's no check coming, but it's an amazing thing opportunity and calling and you have some ability to that or maybe you're teaching school you're helping college students succeed you're you work in law enforcement or you're enjoying you enjoying some retirement because you worked and you already did all that and you're in a different stage of life maybe you work in healthcare, or, or you're an engineer de- developing medical devices that that save people's lives. You're working in an office. You sell things. You own a business. You take care of an aging parent, some of us. That's our calling right now. It hasn't always been. It won't always be. But right now, that's where we are, going to school to, we hope, find some abilities, learn some, use some, hone some, get opportunities. See, here's the thing you got to remember. God's the owner. And And he gives us even these things, the ability to produce wealth in whatever form that is or to to just 
to just do work, to do what he's called us to do. And, and I want you to consider that makes your work sacred. And, and, and sacred just means anything connected to God. Anything having to do with God, connecting to, is sacred. And, and we often think of our lives in this world as there are things that have to do with God, that's usually like here for an hour Sundays, right? Well, if God's the owner of everything and he gives you all your opportunities, your abilities, your callings, then, then everything's connected to him, all of what we're doing. I, I don't think the world really is, some of it's sacred, and some, it's all connected to God. And, and I think what, what he calls us to do is, is because our work whatever it might look like, is sacred. He calls us to, to do it to serve others, to participate in civilization and culture. And, and so we buy things and, and we generate income and, and we purchase items that, that benefit us that we didn't have to make, right? And then others get to do the same because of something we're contributing. The, it, here, here, here's what I mean. Anybody bring their own chair? No? Has anybody ever made a chair? Serious question. Like, like somebody raise their hand. Like, no, no, all right. No, I'm not going to embarrass you. You made a chair? Yeah. What did you use to make your chair? I'm curious. Yeah? From, like, Home Depot or from a tree in the forest? Okay. So this chair, his chair, have you ever thought about, like, your, your chair's working for you guys? You guys good? Okay. I like our chairs. I started thinking about chairs. Have you ever thought about how many people are involved in the making of this chair? It's interesting to think of it that way, isn't it? Like, we'll just start at the bottom. The, this chair is uh, some sort of metal. Where does metal come from? The earth. <laughs> Somewhere in the world, there's a mine, and there are miners. And they're taking metal ore out of the earth, not with their bare hands, with large pieces of mechanical equipment, right? Okay, I'm not over. <laughs> this isn't like trick question hour. And so these workers take the ore out. It goes to some processing situation. It becomes probably most likely just sheets of metal. And then those sheets of metal are cut and folded into one inch square, it looks like, and sent to some place where they're bent into the form that this particular chair calls for. And then it's sent another place where the fabric and the foam and this like black screw right here. Oh, and it's got some paper on the bottom if you ever need a chair. <laughs> this is where churches buy their chairs, the Bertolini Chair Company. And, and here's what's cool about this chair. There's lawyers involved because there's notices down here. <laughs> right? Because you got to have a lawyer to build a chair and staples. Oh, and this ink didn't show up by itself. So you think about all the people who put all these things together that somewhere in the world this chair got assembled and I guarantee pieces of this chair were sent on ocean liners I know they came on a semi-truck to Flagstaff because I saw it unloaded with like 500 of these suckers. <laughs> you ever thought of how many people it takes to build a semi-truck? Like when we do the same exercise with a simple chair, you do it to an ocean line, a, you know, a cargo ship, the mining equipment, like, do you think the guy, let's, let's say it's a South American mine, who knows? You think he knows? He's mining ore so that you can sit in a chair and worship the creator of the universe. So you can do anything you do. A series of, of we don't even know how many people. And, and you, you have a part of, that, of this world too. Whatever it is you do, take care, taking care of someone. Supporting a spouse, going to work at a job where you get paid or selling. I don't know what you do. And I don't know if the people who did this know what they do. 
but they helped all of us worship God today by some effort of work because God gave them a calling, an opportunity, some ability. And if that's the way God works, as the owner, creator of everything, then I, I, I need to change my perspective because I get really stuck on, I did it, I earned it, it's mine. And the sacredness of what God is doing with us every single day, we miss. And, and I know it's, it's his desire that we do what we do for other people. The most important thing ever said in the history of the world, we talk about often, John 13, 34. Jesus said, a new command I give you, love one another. So as you help an aging family member, or you work in healthcare, or you teach school, or you dig ore out of the earth, or you write legal notices for companies, whatever you do, do it loving one another for the benefit of the other. Because where I get stuck on ownership, and maybe you do too, is I did this, it's for me. That's all mine. I, and God just asks us to look outward because he is the owner. And there's a, there's a way you could look at this if you choose. Where you're like, well, I'm just, a, I'm just a cog in a wheel then, Chris. Sure, maybe. But I'll tell you this, I'd rather be a cog in God's enterprise than, than a thief trying to make it about my own happiness, my own future. This idea of when, that God is the owner, it's the, it's the financial foundation that can help us in so many ways. Christy and I, we, we just, we always have to come back to this. It's not a done thing. Like, you don't just say, oh yeah, sure, and then just, it impacts. What you do, it, a few months back, maybe it's been a while now, a year, year and a half, we, like you, many of you, received from the government during COVID a, a stimulus checks and, and help and support and just like, it, in the first round, we're, we're incredible timing. The second one, as we, as we sat there and just looked at our situation, we realized we actually don't need this right now. Like there's nothing pressing. It just, and Chrissy's like, well, we should send it back. I'm like, no, come on. Don't start talking crazy, woman. You know, like, <laughs> we're not sending this back. But we were just honest about it and said, and we just, because God's the owner, we sometimes just go, God, what do you want us to do with this? So we did that, and it, it didn't take very long. We both felt like we should probably give it to somebody or something or an organ, you know, a cause. And, and so that's what we did. We found some places where it was needed more than we needed it. So we gave it. We gave it away. And here's what I would love to be able to tell you. That since that day, like all of our investments, like all the things have been, you know, up and to the right. Like, like we have way more money and say, nope, none of that's true. We've had a bunch of unexpected things we weren't, we weren't planning on. And, and our, I mean, just our like total financial picture, uh, it's just not as good as it was then. But at that point, we just said, God, what do you want us to do with this? And, and it was seemed pretty clear, help Help other places, help other people. I don't know if we do the same thing today. We're in a different situation. But I've not once wished we had it back. I, I've never once regretted going, God, this is yours. What do you want to do with it? I know my, my, my wife has never once thought, that I can guarantee that. We've never thought about it back. One of the things that was really interesting, it brought me great joy, this conversation is our daughter was, uh, I don't know, she just heard people were getting checks, you know, and, and stimulus stuff, and she was in school, in, in college, and she called one day, and said, like, hey, Dad, how are you? And I'm like, what do you want? She goes, hey, this stimulus thing I hear people talk about, did you, did you guys get some of that? I go, we did. 
She goes, well, did you get like a certain amount because of me? <laughs> Any, anybody know where this is going, right? I'm like, yes, yes, we did. She goes, oh, that's awesome. Can I have my portion? And it was so fun to just say, we gave it all away. Even your portion. Your portion, come on. Those of you who aren't laughing are that kid, right? <laughs> you called your parents too now, and you're looking back with regret. Like, but isn't that all of our default? Your portion, my portion. You look at God's stuff, and you think it's your portion. I mean, you, you're, you, if you give to your church or some, like, Christian organization that advances the gospel, like, sometimes we feel like we're doing God a favor. Like, God, I did you a solid. I hear some of your money. It's not your portion to begin with or my portion. And if we can get this right, it changes everything. And, and so here's, here's just the bottom line for today. If you want your finances to be on the best foundation, which will change your, it, it changes so many things. There's so much benefit to each of us. The f- step one is to settle the ownership question. Is it, is it really settled? I got to come back to it often. So we, we just thought of a way to help ourselves. So you're going to get this. These guys are, are going to give you a, a piece of paper, and if you have a pen or a pencil, I'm just going to ask you to consider doing an activity with me. And all the other people in the other services have survived. You're going to be great. This is a quit claim deed. It's not legally binding. There's no notices like the chair from the lawyers because we don't have a lawyer. So this isn't legally binding, but I think our hearts need a reminder sometimes. So it's a pretty simple form. A quick claim deed is an actual thing in, in, in the world. It, it's just saying, I have claim to this, and I'm going to quit claiming it. So I'm going to deed it back or to someone else. So it's pretty simple. Like, you know, you put the date at the top. It's September 11th, 2022. And your name, if you're, you know, your, your spouse, person you do money with is here. Maybe your CPA came to church with you today. Great timing. And this first section is just to use your talents, your gifts, your abilities, your opportunities, and your calling at work. Whatever your work is, not just what you get paid for, what God's called you to do. You're going to use it to serve others, and how can you do that? By keeping things organized or, or, or teaching the you know, kids in a loving environment, whatever you see as God giving you the ability to do, to serve others. How are you going to do that? And then the, the second section is, says, I transfer to the Lord the ownership of the following possessions. What are the things that you can't put on this list? But you got to think about that. It's just something to help us. And, and here's what I know about us, and I don't mean this, like I'm not picking on anyone. Like some of you just aren't going to do it because I asked you to. I get it. That's fine. You're like, no, you're not in charge of me. I'm not. So just ask God. Now, what would you have me do with this activity? It, and take it home, talk, you know, think about it. If you're not ready to do that now, it's between you and him. We're not keeping this. We're not, you don't report it. I did this a while back. I was in a, in a, going through a study. It's one of the studies on this resource page. And I remember it was very profound signing this document, listing a bunch of things. Because I'd started to think they were mine again. They were my portion. Then I could decide. And God just said, eh, let's, let's look at this again. So just give you a few seconds to, to think, to, to maybe write some things down. Or just ask God, God, what, what do you want me to do with this? I, 
I know this isn't easy for some of us. So let's just pray. Ask God to help us. God, we do acknowledge you are the creator. You are the owner of, of all of it, the, all the earth, all of our lives, all of, all of us. And you, God, we are so grateful for the way you've, you've blessed us with the abilities, the opportunities, the callings you've put before us. And, and God, sometimes for me, I, I try to be the owner again. And I pray that through this form or just in our hearts and our minds as we move forward, God, that we would put our finances, our, ourselves, on this foundation of you are the owner. We would settle this question, not just say it's settled, but let it be settled. Help us. Help us trust you as the owner. God, let us release all of our lives to you. In Jesus' name. Amen.